Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. You're listening to The Steelers Show. I'm Chris Carter here with Dale Lolly. We're talking all things Steelers here. Dale, how are you doing, good sir? I'm doing great. Oh, that's great to hear, it's man. All, it's June. That what? means training camp. It's right around the corner. Yes, it is. And what the heck is on your What hat are you wearing? This is my genuine Washington Pony League World Series hat. Pony League World Series? Yes. There was a World Series for ponies? No. Okay. It's a baseball thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, before we continue, we want to remind you that this Steelers coverage, as always, is brought to you by Henny Jewelers. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers on Walnut Street in Shadyside. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. We're here talking about comparisons and uh you bring done. a guy up i'll bring a guy up and we'll discuss okay okay well, all right i'm bringing a guy are we bringing matchups or are we talking who's better at that position we're gonna say who's better at that position and of course i'll be right and you'll be wrong because <laughs> wait because when i pick one you're like okay like i say like chris carter you say jerry rice oh yeah of course you win that's that's fair okay Go ahead. Right. you bring up the first one i'll bring up the second one <laughs> okay. how about that all right fine whatever all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna, I'm gonna start with my boy rod woodson Mel Blunt. Okay. <laughs> See, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> it's fair. I mean, but they're, they're, they're comparable careers. Both yeah. Hall of Famers. <laughs> uh, both guys who helped redefine their position. Yes, they did. And, and I mean, Mel Blunt, Blunt they literally made rules to stop him. Um, and he was a defensive M- MVP, won four Super Bowls. Hall of Famer, just like Rod Rod Woodson. I think Rod Woodson, he was. I think he was the better athlete, but also I think that came with his time. You know, I think as as time developed and the football developed, you got faster guys, and there were better ways to train people. Um, but definitely Mel Blunt. I mean, Rod Woodson. I've seen him say on live air that Mel Blunt is the best cornerback. That's well, ever that's played. what you would say. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's going to be humble about that. Right, but they're, right. I mean, they're both great, and they both were uh, defensive MVPs. Woodson won at ninety three. That's true. He did uh, one of the great. best defensive seasons I've seen a Steeler have mm. and i've seen some pretty good ones and he came back from an acl injury to play in the super bowl what kind of mess is that and um, then played quite well after that after he moved on and, and moved to safety long career mm-hmm. uh both great guys but I, I i do agree with rod i think i think you know mel when you look at players mel blunt is is, is right up there in terms of cornerback play sure why not now i'll bring one up okay ben roethlisberger <laughs> Joe Montana. What, what, we're, talk, we're talking Steelers players. Oh, we're here. talking Steelers. Oh, they have Steelers to be a only. Steeler. Yes. This, this oh. is the Steelers show. Okay, that I thought we were just sense. doing random plays. You're like, I, I was going to start with like Deion Sanders or like you know Jesus. Um, but um, okay, I'm gonna say Terry Bradshaw. That's, okay. the, that's the only the guy that you can go with. Yeah, let's um, discuss. Okay, here's my thing. Terry is a big game quarterback. When it came to the Super Bowls, you didn't see this man backing down. The roughest big game he ever had in the Super Bowl. Well, the roughest Super Bowl he ever had was Super Bowl Nine when he was when, when the offense was struggling. The defense had to shut it down. But every other Super Bowl, he was he was the man. Ben Roethlisberger in the Super Bowl, I, I still haven't seen him put together a complete com- performance like Bradshaw did. Oh, I think he did against Arizona in, in two thousand. That wasn't a complete performance. It wasn't. There, he led one late drive and one early drive. The rest of the game, if this if James Harrison doesn't have that pick six, the, the Steelers probably lose that. Maybe, game. maybe. But I'll tell you what. Uh, t- Terry had some stinkers too. He had some. Oh, he had some bad games. I'm not gonna say. He, he, <laughs> so say he didn't. I will say. I think Roethlisberger probably has. Well, 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 he definitely has the better numbers, and I think he he'll be the guy that people remember more as far as like complete seasons, um, because he didn't have the down years that Terry had. But Terry, I mean, give give me that guy in the in the big game over Ben just because of the way that he was able to step up. And I mean, you could hit him a thousand times, but he always got up in the Super Bowl. Now, of course, he didn't in the end of his career, but. I think it was a different time. I think there's one big comparison between the two where they're equal. Mm-hmm. They both say dumb stuff. At the <laughs> they say really <laughs> dumb stuff. But uh, but that, that, that's, that's a good one, Dale. We'll be right back to do some more comparisons right after these messages. Miller Lite is the original light beer. And we'll always brew it to have more taste. With only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs. Because we believe that if you compromise on taste, you can taste the compromise. Miller Lite. Hold true. Great beer, great responsibility. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Average analysis, 12 fluid ounces. Less than one gram protein, zero grams fat. If you're one of the thousands of Western Pennsylvanians who love to get outdoors, then you need to check out this cool new website, StepOutside.org. Learn where, when, and how you can go camping, hiking, or hunting. 
or take part in power sports, shooting sports, or water sports in your local community or across the country at stepoutside.org, where everything you need to know is just a click away. That's stepoutside.org. What I want from my public accounting firm is big ideas. But I don't want to lose the personal attention. My company needs global capabilities. From a firm with local ownership. And I want to work with industry experts. Who take the time to understand my unique challenges. And that's what sets Schneider Downs apart. Expertise for the most complex business issues. With the service you need every day. To learn how our big thinking with a personal focus can help your company, visit schneiderdowns.com. Injured in an accident? Need assistance in preserving your business's interests? Let the attorneys at Bassey, Vreeland & Associates protect your legal rights. For over 65 years, Bassey, Vreeland & Associates has been representing the citizens and businesses of southwestern Pennsylvania. With offices strategically located in Washington and Charleroi, Bassey, Vreeland & Associates can deliver results for you throughout the Pittsburgh area. Visit www.bmvlaw.com or call 724-228-7000 to see how Bassey, Vreeland & Associates can meet your legal needs. Bassey, Vreeland & Associates we fight, we care, we win. Welcome back to DK Sports Radio. You're listening to The Steelers Show. This is Chris Carter here with Dale Lolly. We're talking comparisons. Um, before we get into the second part of our show, we have to thank, again, our friends for all their sponsors of our great Steelers coverage. Henny Jewelers, Henny Jewelers, your jewelers on Walnut Street in Shadyside. Henny Jewelers, your jewelers for life. Shout out our friends at MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag, your top place for online sports betting. Get your bets in now. MyBookie.ag, you play, you win, you get paid. Do not forget, uh, DK, DK Sports will get, you, or will get you a promo code for a 50% bonus on your deposit. Um, and again, remember, MyBookie.ag, you play, you win, you get paid. Now, Dale, we just got into players that we were comparing. Uh, we did Woodson versus Blunt and Roethlisberger versus Bradshaw. Let's do some teams. Let's do some teams. I'm going to say a team, and I want you to say uh, I want you to say your better team, and then we'll we'll, we'll compare them. I'm going to start with 1978. That's 19, my Steelers. 1978, team. the year. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the Steelers <laughs> team from 1978. Duh. Yes, this the 1978 to 1979 team that that won Super Bowl 13. They beat the Cowboys. Um, they had the number one offense and the number one defense. Um, for Terry Bradshaw went berserk. Got a got a got a Super Bowl MVP that year. Uh, the defense wasn't as stout as it had been, but it was still good enough to be to be elite. And the offense went berserk that 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 year. You know, I'm gonna go uh, 1977 Steelers. Really, the one that lost to the Orange Crush. Yes. Okay. Why would you say them? I think that's the year I went. Seventy-seven. Did you mean seventy-six? Seventy. They, I'm sorry, seventy-six. Yeah, I years. was like, I was like the seventy. You, you, yeah, you passed up. You gave if, me the easy if, one. <laughs> if you ask, if you ask the players who played in that era when what their best team was, they will tell you to a man it was seventy-six. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Of and that, they yeah. didn't win the Super Bowl that year because of injuries. Wasn't it? Was it? Was it five shutouts? Uh, I believe yeah. I think they closed the season out with yeah five. five. Shot. That, that, I that, mean that defense was unreal. Amazing. Uh, you know they they had to go right with Reggie Harrison in the playoff game at Oakland. Uh, yeah, the it, equivalent of Ben Tate. Yeah, they, <laughs> uh, they were you know b both Rocky and Franco were out. Mm -hmm. um, that was a team. You still had the defense at its apex. Yeah, they were still very good. The offense was coming into its own mm -hmm. until those injuries happened. Uh, that again is the team that everybody points to as being the one. That is the best in team history. Yeah, and it, it, it was it was a doggone shame because that was the that was the that was the one time that you, the, the, team, the Steelers had that team and they finally lost to the Raiders in a big playoff game with a team that everyone was like this could be another year and they could have three peated that year. So that's about why. But that, that was a good that was a good talk. All right, what's what's your team that we're gonna start with? Let's go. Uh, let's change it up a little bit. Okay. Let's go, coaches. Co Ooh. All right. All right. And everybody likes to do this one. So let's let's. I'm gonna give I'm, I'm gonna give both the topics. Bill Cowher versus Mike Tomlin. All right. All right, Bill Cowher versus Mike Tomlin. I'm taking Mike Tomlin. You're taking Mike Tomlin. Yeah, I just got to take him because right because I, I see Tomlin when he came in, he changed the culture. He made he, he was harder on the players at first, um, and all the players, uh, the, you know, Troy Polamalu, Ben Rob, they were saying like you know things got things got tougher. We worked a lot more, um, and we and that training camp was brutal. And he established the tone. Um, you saw. 
Plaxico Burris and a lot of players, they would come late to practice under Bill Cowher. Nothing would happen to them. That happened San Antonio Holmes, Richard Mendenhall. They all played try that game. They were get they were sitting out certain weeks. And we just saw Martavis Bryant made news on social media. He was sitting out against the Lions. The Steelers did not care. Yeah, I, I don't know that either one of those two guys um, is the disciplinarian. That, uh, I think I think Cowher gets a lot of. Uh, praise as being a disciplinarian when he actually wasn't yeah. uh, the disciplinarian that everybody saw with the jutting jaw and all that stuff and the spit flying. That was a lot of that was just game day stuff, and I, I think Tomlin handles his stuff behind closed doors a mm-hmm. lot more that you don't see as much of. I think they both let players get away with things. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. In today's <laughs> NFL, I'm pretty sure everybody lets people get the right if if you're the right player, the right guy. Yeah, yeah. like 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 there are Bill, different like, rules for different guys. Exactly, because like you know, like Bill Belichick let you know he he he's notorious for giving players like Jonas Gray a hard time because they they missed the practice. But let Tom Brady take a break. You think he would ever be like, oh Tom, I'm gonna bench you for three weeks? Yeah. That's just not happening. Yeah, that, that, yeah. It, it's interesting. You know, you talk about changing the culture. I think I think Bill Cower did that as well. That's kind fair. of reinvigorated the franchise mm-hmm. after after you know more than a decade of, of really not doing a lot during the eighties. Yeah. Uh, so I give Cower credit for that. And six straight to, you know playoff, playoff appearances to start his career. That mm-hmm. was that was a, a you know very uh, good streak that that he had going there. The one thing he didn't do early on was win a lot of those AFC championships. Yeah. And that was a problem. But I think if you know if you look at him overall, um, I think Cower has a slight edge in terms of you know what he was able to do in the playoffs without the franchise quarterback that for much true. of that too. Now I will say this: I mm-hmm. think Mike Tomlin has done a good job of adjusting this team and rebuilding this particular team mm-hmm. on the fly then to the point where he's never had a losing season. That's something that Cower can't say. And, and what I think is also important because I've I've done this comparison a lot with with friends and and talked about this before. But what's also really cool is when you look at Cower took and, and Noel said he's like when he was retiring he said. You know, there's there's pieces on on this squad because he left him Greg Lloyd, Rod Woods, and a number of other guys that were big parts of that first Super Bowl trip against the Cowboys that they lost. But when Bill Cowher took those guys, he was able to take them to six straight playoffs. And then you saw when they in in the late '90s and '98, '99, even though they acquired people like Jerome Bettis, they they had to go through their rebuilding phase. And then you saw the con- construction of a new of a new you know dynasty sort of when it came when it came to when it came to the the defense with Casey Hampton you saw Alan Fanica step up Heinz Ward and I think you see the same things with with Mike Tomlin you saw him take that that the the results of that era and with with Polo Malu and James Harrison and Lamar Woodley and you sort of just Escher, well he drafted Lamar Woodley but so but he took that he took those era of guys and you know they never had a losing season but those eight, those back to back eight and eight years. That's when they were starting to retool and find the new stars, and now they're in a situation where they have they're they're loaded with superstars. Not on defense as much, but on offense. I mean, this might be the most loaded they've been since the seventies. Yeah, I agree, and uh, I think it's. Uh, I, I think they're very comparable. I yeah. really do. Uh, both both I think great coaches at the end of the yes. day. Well, there you go. That was a that was a great talk. Thanks, Dale, for coming in and doing this show. And you've been listening to the Steelers Show here on DK Sports Radio. Thanks for listening. Chris Carter, Dale Lolly, signing out.